Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Calling Uncensored. I am here with Donna Jean. She is a yoga coach. She's an intuitive transformation coach and spiritual teacher. I first met her when she was traveling the world teaching yoga and coaching abroad. So I'm very excited to have her on the show today. We're just going to have a powerful conversation about the spiritual transformation process, stepping into your calling, and just see where this conversation flows. So thank you, Donna, for joining us. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited. So excited. I love doing podcasts and I love having conversations about this yeah, stuff. I do too. I do too. So I will go ahead and let you introduce yourself and just tell a little bit about, you know, your story and let's see where it goes. Cool. cool. So I am a spiritual teacher. I'm a yogi in my heart and soul and for life. I will definitely always be on the spiritual quest and the path of always peeling back the onion, you know, getting closer to the core. Um, I am uh, a coach for women. So I'm a spiritual coach, intuitive coach for women. And specifically what I do is I really help them get to a place where they can navigate their daily life and feel peace and joy and ease and really start getting to their goals. Um, these women that I work with have are women that have been on the path for a while, actually, and they've done the therapy, they're doing the podcast, they're doing all of these things, and they're really starting to like bump up against that that last ceiling. And uh, these are these are women that need guidance. You know that they're they're finally like, okay, I can't do it on my own. So we we work together on three big things anxiety fear and you know previous dysfunction healing and clearing all these things so they can live a life of just being anxiety free um so yeah that's what i do in my professional world i'm also a yoga and meditation teacher and um yeah like i said i'm just a yogi on the path perfect i love that and so at some point the student was ready and the teacher appeared True right? story. A few times, a few times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So why don't you just maybe just take us back a little bit and tell us how you actually got started with I'm um, healing your own situation or your own transformation and how that even, because I know so many women that watch or listen to this podcast or follow me, they are on a very similar path where they are in the process of going through the throes of a transformation. And maybe they haven't even recognized that so much of what they're going through is being used for the greater good. And they might not even recognize that yet. Right. A lot of times, you know, until you look back at it, you know, you look over it and you see how everything sort of served you. Yeah. You know, so I'll let you just touch on that a little bit, a little bit about, you know, when this, how the student, you know, allowed the teacher to come through. How did that process work for you? Cool. Yeah. So it started, um, I don't know, four or five years ago. Um, I, Basically, I was dealing with a lot of anxiety and a lot of depression. I come from a background of, you know, a lot of upheaval, violence, abuse of all kinds. And, you know, I had made a lot of headway, but I was still sitting in tons of anxiety. And really, like, I really just, I hit rock bottom with my, like, mental wellness when I was out for a hike in the beautiful white mountains of New Hampshire with my daughter, who was probably just about ready to drive. I believe she had her learner's permit at that time and our dog at the time. And it was a gorgeous day. And I was hit so hard. Like as, as soon as we got on the trail, I, all I wanted was to have this gorgeous day, you know, as my day off. And I got hit hard with paralyzing anxiety attacks. I didn't know that they were anxiety attacks. I had no idea. I had never experienced one. And all I remember was like this tightness in my chest. I heard voices in my head. Um, my vision got blurry. But it was blurry, but there was also white spots. I mean, I basically like was brought down to my knees. And, you know, one happened and I was like, you know, oh my God, you know, what was that? I think maybe it was a panic or anxiety attack and just praying that it didn't come back again. And I just had one after another, after another, after another, because this is really common once you have one, unless, you know, you can get into some serious pranayama or, or something. Sometimes medication is actually the only thing that will really cut through it once you experience 10 or 12 of these. And by the time we 
got down off the mountain and into the car and I told my daughter, you have to drive. I was in a sobbing heap on the way home. I just couldn't believe that this was like my life. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. And I knew that something had to change. And I had been to a couple of yoga classes and something just nudged me to go back to another one. And I did. And for whatever reason, I felt good. And I just kept going back. And my big breakthrough class was me being late to a class and I couldn't get my favorite spot, which was in the back, hidden away from everybody else, judging myself, judging others, you know, because this is very common when we practice asana and yoga. Mm -hmm. um, and I was in front of the teacher and it was really minor. My very first awakening was so minor, but I'll never forget it. I mean, I guess it wasn't minor. Um, he said, um, it was on an inhale to lift my leg higher. And I really believed that I couldn't lift my leg any higher than it already was, that I had hit my limit. And the teacher said, just see, just see, you know, just some is enough that you can feel it. And I did lift my leg higher. And that was all I needed, that little window, just sort of start smashing beliefs, right? Wow. And getting out of the box of the ego. And that is when I became the curious yogi and I became obsessed. It was, it completely turned my life around. Everybody was noticing these changes in me. I couldn't even really like pinpoint them. All I knew is I was going to heated vinyasa yoga, power yoga, based in breath, based in pranayama, six, five, between five and seven days a week for a year straight. Mm -hmm. wow. And yeah, it was really starting to transform my life. And then after that, I was compelled to do my very first 200 hour teacher training. And that's when things really started to amp up because I, I finally started to understand how the egocentricity works mm -hmm. and spiritual principles and really started to work with them. And then at that time in my first year of being a teacher, I was really confronted with a lot of my old stories that caused me so much suffering. We talk about this in yoga all the time. What is causing me suffering? And in that first year, I was able to finally forgive my mother for, you know, years of what I perceived to be, you know, abuse and wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. And it was a palpable, deep spiritual experience that I, I mean, I felt like all the cells in my body just fire off. It was like the story died out. I had this big ego death, a huge emotional release and was able to see her for who she was. She was a hurt, wounded, scared person who mm -hmm. could only teach me what she knew. Oh my God. I just love this story. <laughs> I'm so glad you're sharing this story right now. There's just so many good nuggets in here. Oh I my know. God. I had a very similar experience. If you've been listening to the podcast, some of the earlier episodes, it's like that first breakthrough moment mm -hmm. is with forgiveness. Yeah. And it was peeling away a layer, like an onion over the course of the next seven years, seven or eight years, I kept peeling away onion because that eventually turned into this journey of self-love and forgiving myself and like just, you know, snowballed. But I remember in the moment uh, that I first released or, or first offered forgiveness for my father, and it was a huge breakthrough, like literally just pouring out of me, energy pouring out of me. I find that so interesting. I was reading the other day, um, Power Versus Force from David Hawkins. I don't know if you read that with the map of the scale of consciousness. No. This is very interesting. I'm going to do a different episode on this, actually, because this is where, you know, that the um, right around the consciousness level of 310. Um, so if you're in victim mindset, you're usually hovering around 200 level of consciousness or below on a scale of one to a thousand with anything above 700 being enlightenment, 500 being, 500 being the frequency of love. I didn't even know there was a measurement for this. I'm fascinated. Yeah. So I have to check out that book, but, uh, the three, when you approach the 310 level of consciousness, you start, that's the level of willingness. That's when you're able 310. Okay. That's when you're willing to start to see things differently and you're moving yourself out of victim mode. And then a very interesting thing, a big transformation happens when you hit the 350 level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And that is the level of acceptance and forgiveness. It's also when you take full accountability. Mm -hmm. 
and you start to work with universal energies. And that happens right at the 350 level of consciousness. So it's fascinating how when you look back at your woundings, right? Which I have, I teach us all the time, right? That are, and to quote Rumi, the wound is where the light enters. When you look at the woundings that we've been living with or carrying around with us as a stepping stone to allow ourselves to counteract those wounds with the opposite, just like in yoga, the, the joining of opposites. What is the opposite of anger, resentment, pain, and hurt? It's forgiveness, compassion, love, appreciation, and gratitude, right? And as you start to call these higher levels of frequency in, you instantly raise your vibration, you raise your level of consciousness. Right. And as you raise your level of consciousness, that's when you get to start seeing the reality around you start to repopulate because you're creating your reality based on your frequency and vibration. It's all based on that. Yeah. It's yeah. so interesting. So it's like our emotional body, our emotional body is the key to our, I truly believe our, our emotional body, understanding our emotional body and how to transcend the lower emotions and call in the higher emotions is a key indicator system of how we're able to transcend and access higher levels of consciousness. Wow. That's awesome. Through the emotional body. So it's just so fast. It's such a fascinating process. And I love your story about the moment. It was that one, you had this one little, it seems small, but it, it was monumental in your experience right. to be able to just move your foot. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. that perception shift. It was a perception shift. And this is where perception is everything. Right. You might have only moved your foot a centimeter. It didn't matter. You felt it. Nobody else could have even seen it. Who cares? It was a perception shift, a belief and a perception shift of what you perceive to be possible for yourself. Right, right. And this is what sparks the curiosity in, yo in yogis is yeah. what else is there? What yeah. else is there that I'm not seeing? And I love that you just said the being willing. We talk about this so much in teacher training, specifically my background, um, my teacher training, um, the, the spiritual teachings are based in A Course in Miracles. And it's all about you just have to move into being willing to see things differently. That's really the first step. And I was working with that a lot. And I was met with so much ego resistance to letting go of this story. Who, because what, and I say this, I, I talk about this a lot in my content. What really fascinates me is how difficult it can be for a lot of people to come out of that story because they've been in the throes of it for such a long span of time. Mm -hmm. And then, and then once the ego gets wind that you're coming out of the story, mm -hmm. it kind of digs in deeper and likes to compound things, right? With, I can't believe, you know, you've been attached to this story that long. It's, mm -hmm. it's almost like it sees you leaving it. Mm -hmm. And then it's like trying to latch onto it in, in other ways to keep you in it. You know, it's just that safety mechanism. Ego is mm -hmm. always trying to use fear to keep us safe. And I was working with that spiritual law of forgiveness and fascinated by it for a full year and I was like well maybe I can forgive her for this but not this mm -hmm. like no it has to be full on mm -hmm. double complete and this is the the coolest coolest part when it comes to practicing these spiritual principles is that once you see you cannot unsee <laughs> yeah yeah I truly see her for who she is now mm -hmm. and send her so much compassion and love and understanding. Mm -hmm. She's just a person in pain. Mm -hmm. and there, there's another quote in A Course in Miracles. I can't rem really remember how it goes, but if you see your brother in pain, like how would you treat them? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like that. So that yeah. was the first one. That was the first big awakening. Mm -hmm. Do you have a second one you want to share? Yeah, I think it was... Um, it was definitely, uh, so it was a little over a year ago that I left the United States to live in the East Coast. And I've been fascinated for a long time with uh, stripping myself of my belongings. I think it's another kind of yogi thing. You know, I've read a lot of stories about people who have done that. Minimalist life really fascinated me. And, you know, I was a solo parent of a child. And I took a lot of pride um, 
into, you know, coming into more abundance as I got older, once I started healing and clearing things, even my lack mindset, my poverty mindset was dissipating more. I still had my challenges with it, but th things were definitely, abundance was coming in a lot more. And I just got myself into a place where I was like, well, you could really take a leap here and leave your, your careers that are fulfilling and thriving and sell all of your beautiful belongings that you've taken three years to cultivate in this beautiful apartment and travel the world. And I just couldn't get it out of my head. It was one of those things. And I was sitting in front of my laptop and I had all these tabs open researching things about travel. And I, logic kept coming in. Well, what are you going to do about this? What are you going to do about this? And I finally was like, I've had it with you, ego. I've had it with your logic. And I threw all these papers up in the air and I looked around in my apartment. I was like, you got to go. <laughs> you gotta go. I'm done. I'm done. Like I can only have this argument so long in my head. And that was it. I gave myself four months to plan it. I sold all of my beautiful things. I kept a few things in storage at family's house and I split. I traveled to Hawaii, Australia. I taught yoga at a spiritual retreat in Cambodia for two months where that is when I reconnected with you or I connected with you for the first time while I was traveling there and then mm -hmm. continued on my journey. But the biggest awakening while I had, while I was teaching yoga was, I was really starting to get um, confronted with my new role as a teacher and embodying that more, stepping into my divine gifts and mm -hmm. knowing that part of my role is to help lead people out of suffering, not just in a yoga classroom, but one-on-one. -on -one you know, to really teach. And of course, you know, there's always the fraud syndrome. Well, you know, you need a college education. You need this, you need that. And I was in the middle of teaching a class and completely in flow and just spirit just flowed through me. And it was just, it talked to me as if I was myself. I was like, girl, what are you doing? Like, get to step in. <laughs> you were meant, you were meant to help people more, and I was just like flooded with it, and 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 accepted it, and then mm -hmm. that is when your um, Instagram feed came into my field. Yes, I remember that, and you signed up for my program immediately called Go Global Baby, which is yeah. all about stepping into your role as a messenger, teacher, healer, and overcoming fraud syndrome. Yeah. So I mean, it was no no coincidence. <laughs> that I got the message, and then your your teachings and your offerings came into my field, and that's when I started working with you, and was just like, I love Sarah. We're so, <laughs> we're kind of like the same person. Yeah, we are. It's so funny. It's so. I just love how the synchronicities play out, and then when you have the courage to pull the trigger on them, you know, because when the synchronicities pop up, the little breadcrumbs pop up, you know, like you know, you're traveling, like every little thing has played a role in your process, like you're unfolding, right? Yeah. yeah. So being able to recognize the ego's voice of fear that is there, no matter what state, you know, fraud syndrome is like universal. It doesn't even yeah. matter what level of, it doesn't matter what tax bracket you're in. It doesn't matter, you know, like fraud syndrome is a very normal thing. And you know what? My whole take on fraud syndrome is if you don't feel like a fraud, you're not doing enough because you're not stepping out of your comfort zone. What the, right. what are you doing? You know what I mean? You're not at the edge, get to the edge already. You no know? right. limits, see what you're here to do. And, and you know what I mean? And take that leap. If you're not feeling like a fraud, you're just not pushing the edge. Yeah. Yeah. You're in your, you're in your comfort bubble. And to me, that is, you know, you're, you're, you're stuck or you're stagnant or you're, or you, or you have these dreams or desires or these, it's way more scary for me to be like sitting there wishing or searching tabs forever about something that I want to do or proceed with and never having the courage to pull the trigger on it. I'd much rather be dealing with fraud syndrome. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. And I, I mean, I, I think that you could probably relate to this. I think that we're at a point where once you have so many awakenings and once you have um, done a certain uh, amount of courageous things, I can feel procrastination. I can feel complacency, complacency mm -hmm. and it's actually, whereas it used to be getting out of my comfort zone was uncomfortable. Now when I'm not in it. Yes. When I'm not in it, 
I, I, I can feel it in my body. I don't, I feel uncomfortable yeah. in my energy and in my body if I'm being too complacent. And I yeah. give myself little gifts here and there. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to give myself like this amount of time, you know, whether it's a day or a few hours or whatever. Because I think you still need to bring compassion into like when you are experiencing some level of that procrastination, you know, you can see your sabotage. You're not going to buy into your sabotage completely, but it's really, it's just awareness. I talk about this in my content all the time. It doesn't even take a long time. You don't even really need to like do anything. Once something is in your awareness, bam, right here. Mm -hmm. If it is not serving you, you will be made aware of it in time and it will be on the way out. Mm -hmm. You don't even really need to take immediate action. I'm not saying that you should or shouldn't, but that's been my experience. It just doesn't feel good in my alignment. And I'm like, ick, nope. Mm -hmm. And that's that. And, um, so yeah, I mean, it's just been, it's been, <laughs> it's been one breakthrough or one awakening after another. And it's so interesting. Once you step on this path, I was like, I remember what, you know, way back when I first had my first couple, couple of awakenings, I was like, I guess this is it, you know, like <laughs> I'm done now, you know, it's over. And then, and then I, you, I I'm not going to cuss. You probably can't cuss on your phone. Oh no, it's called the calling uncensored. Oh, uncensored. <laughs> Right. I forgot. I forgot. And no, then I have a random potty mouth. I had to account for that because yeah. I don't want to spend my time editing everything. Today. Good, 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 good. <laughs> I do too. I do too. But that's when shit really hits the fan, really hits the fan. And I didn't, I've never experienced a dark night of the soul until I got home from Southeast Asia when mm -hmm. I got home from my travels. Mm -hmm. And I had this really, um, this, this really challenging experience with my beloved daughter who, you know, she, by me leaving her abandonment issues were triggered hardcore. Hmm. And, um, you know, she was very um, reckless with my finances and it impacted my life in such a way, like a huge, huge way. And it just, it put, it spun me out. It spun me out to the point where I was experiencing such anxiety again, mm -hmm. such depression and thoughts of suicidal ideation that I couldn't recognize myself. And then I would, you know, logic came in like, well, how the hell are you supposed to coach people? Like your life is a pile of shit. You know, like you're a loser. Like, look what's happening. You don't have anything to offer anybody. And that's when you came into my field again. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got involved with Evolve. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I want to share with everyone that- yeah, I remember working through that um, situation and what it triggered for you, what it triggered for her. It's interesting that you say her abandonment issues because that's what's uh, healing on the collective level. Yeah, well. totally. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. And the reason that I want to bring this up and share this is because I want everybody that listens to really understand the transformational rapid healing and awareness that can come from inner child healing mm -hmm. and really like sitting because it's, it's difficult for us if we don't have a, a, a big meditation practice, if we don't have a mindfulness practice to really get in touch with inner child, I find that when you're guided through it, you can really let go and just be led through it. And I had the big epiphany that I didn't trust anything. Mm -hmm. And it tapped into my betrayal. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know it was there. Mm -hmm. And that again, lifted me up out of the dark. I talk about like being at the bottom in the darkness and like the light is up here and I'm like clawing my way up and just that new awareness alone, getting the clarity and help, helping me connect the dots. Things in the 3D were still a mess, but at least I had clarity on it. Mm -hmm. That is huge. Yeah. Awareness and clarity first, like that comes first for everything. Yeah. 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 
And so, you know, ever since then, it's just been, you know, really examining more like what's underneath, you know, really looking into my patterns and, and what has caused me to be who I am in the 3D. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much leads me up into the here and now. I did want to share one more recent breakthrough and I'll make this quick. I realized, I think that a lot of times we don't give enough value and there's not enough spoken about um, our dysfunction as we're raised. And, you know, I think everybody has experienced some level of it and, you know, that's okay. Our caregivers only did what they knew how at the time. And then it's up to us to heal all those patterns. Right. Mm -hmm. And this relationship with my beloved daughter, I couldn't quite, get to the place where we could heal. And I knew that there was still something out of my awareness that I was desperately wanting clarity on. And so I've been divinely guided in the last few weeks to go to what's called ACA meetings, mm -hmm. Adult Children of Alcoholism and Dysfunction. And they are powerful. They are amazing. And this has led me to understanding that I was put set back in my childhood trauma when my daughter and I had a very big argument and the way that she was behaving was exactly like how my mother would behave mm. and it just set in her in small child Donna Jean back to that place I mean I was shaking experiencing all the things I did as a child but I couldn't grasp it because I was in such the throes of logic. You're the mother. Mm -hmm. You should be teaching her. You should, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. Could not grasp it until just recently. And that's something that happened six months ago. Mm -hmm. And so realizing that we had our own sort of patterns and dysfunction that need to be healed. Like it's a beautiful gift. Mm -hmm. It's such a gift to, to know what exactly we need to do now. Mm -hmm. So if there's anybody that's listening, there, this is real work. You know, we live, this, our avatars, we live in this 3D. We have to accept that there are certain things that we need to shine a light on, look back, really dig in deep and say, okay, this is where this is coming from. This is how I'm pushing this out right now mm -hmm. in, in my world in my, in my, in my field, how do I heal it? Cause I don't want it anymore. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, I also come across some spiritual teachers and healers in this, in this industry that I've, I've stumbled upon that totally disagree. Not my, I'm, I'm in line with you. And I totally, cause you know, I teach all this in an inside evolve, right? You know, inner child healing is a big part of it. And I've just, I don't, I don't know. I, some, I've heard some spiritual teachers sort of discount it. Well, I understand what you do and I appreciate it, but we just do a faster way or something, something along those lines. Mm. And I just feel like there's this glossing over, like yeah. afraid to look at the shadow, afraid yeah. to look at the dark aspects, afraid to, and it's not like we're supposed to dwell on them. I don't, you know, don't teach that we dwell on them. We don't identify them. It's so we can stop identifying with them and so we can reframe them and give them purpose and meaning that empowers us instead of purpose and meaning that you know just fill us with fear right, right. um so it's really interesting to to hear some of the you know some of the other people that i so that i know in this circle that you know that think that you're just supposed to be able to snap your fingers and heal everything in the quantum field, just like with the snap of the fingers. And I was like, if that's actually the way it's supposed to be, then mm -hmm. what soul lessons are we here to learn? Like that sort of takes away the whole purpose of the journey. You know what I mean? You're not supposed to go right. from zero to 60 overnight. And it's not saying it's supposed to be a struggle or it has to be, but it's about the person you're becoming in the process more right. than it is about anything else. Right. You know, it's about, actually embodying the higher virtues of love, compassion, gratitude, appreciation. And I'm sorry, but sometimes shining a light on the darkness and, and, and working your way through the shadow aspects is how you do that. I agree wholeheartedly. I, I talk a lot about this actually in my content too, where, um, 
it's it's I don't I don't necessarily have any spiritual teachers in my field where I see that's happening. I do see uh, a big surge of manifestation teachers and coaches teaching people this is all you have to do. This is all you have to do. Yeah. And I'm just like, but we're human. Yeah, we have these human experiences. We're plopped down here into this vessel. If we have been taught and modeled to have that, that we are going to be left. Mm -hmm. If we associate love with pain, if we have low levels of self-worth, we are only going to keep spinning that and drawing that in. Yes. Yes. That's, and that's what I mean. Like manifestation, certain manifestation, you know, in the manifestation realm and things like that, that gloss over the yeah. fact, that's why I always say manifesting is a self-healing journey. Yeah. It's, it truly is. Like if you really want to manifest consistently the life that you want and, and really start to up-level all areas, it has to be a self-healing journey. It can't be affirmations or the law of attraction as a band-aid to put on something that you're not like getting to the core of the reason that, you're not getting what you want to begin with. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. We and have it's a really, human experience. We yeah. Have a human experience. I just don't think it's helpful to that. Like people out there, people that are, there are people that are curious about spirituality that have very minimal or zero awareness level. You know, how do we speak to them? That's, that's really where I'm at with all of this is um, I really want to foster more awaken awakenings in people that have very, like they're at the lower levels of consciousness. And I, I almost hate saying it that way because I don't want it to be, sound condescending. You yeah, know, that's, it's, yeah, I see what you're not, saying. How do we reach them and get them, you know, to start awaken more? Because so that's, that's sort of like where I have, um, sorry, go ahead, finish what you were saying. No, no, I was finished. Oh, okay. Um, I almost feel like that's not even my job. You know what I mean? Like for me, because I feel like the, wherever people are is serving them exactly, you know, where they're at, you know, wherever they're at is where they're at. Like for me, I know when I was going through my lack of awareness phase and I was going through all my dysfunction and victim mindset and all that, it was serving me. Like all of that was serving me. And it wasn't until I was really ready internally to raise my hand and then the answers come. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of like, I have to, you know, cause you know, it's like releasing, you know, like understanding that every soul is on their own journey and some souls may not be here to awaken in this incarnation even. That's true. That's a good reminder. Because, I, you know, because everybody incarnate, you know, I believe that we incarnate, we forget who we are. We come here as spiritual beings where we forget on purpose who we are so we can learn these lessons. And who's to say what the previous life was for that person and what they came here to experience in this lesson. There's, this brings up a memory I read and I think it was conversations with God or something like that. Like where one person was in one life, he had everything. He had all the money. He had lots of fame. He had lots of people doting on him all the time and things like that and wanted for nothing materials and all the things and all the, you know, he was in a powerful leadership kind of position. The next time he incarnated, he specifically wanted to experience what it would be like to be at everybody's mercy, the complete opposite. Wow. So when you look at someone that has, you know, you take a glance at maybe like, let's say the person that's on the corner asking for money and at everybody's mercy, other people's mercy for gratitude or, or appreciation and things like that, where maybe the previous lifetime, that was not the case at all, but he wanted to come and experience an evolution of his own soul, but from a different perspective. Sort of takes it to like, okay, you really can't judge anybody for anything with where they're oh, at. Right. And it's like, whether you're like, you know, this, king on the hill in one lifetime and then you purposely incarnate as a homeless person on the street in the next lifetime because you want to uh, you want to experience polar opposite experiences of you know what i'm saying yeah for your own soul's journey yeah so i've had to step into trust that know that everybody that's meant to hear my message will find it just like i sort of popped in, in and out of your experience exactly when you needed it right and if you're not resonating with it it's just not meant to be at this time. This is true. I do agree. I do agree. And I think I'd like to amend what I said earlier. I think, I think for me, it's more about, um, again, it's, it's like being the yogi in my heart is doing my best to help alleviate suffering. Yes. For those that want that. 
Mm -hmm. And everybody, I do feel, and I do believe in that, you know, that as we move forward, shining our light, that vibration being sent out is more powerful than the vibration of the people that are suffering. And so continuously shining that light, it's like a ripple effect. I mean, every person that you're helping with your coaching or every person that hears your message, every person that hears this podcast, it's like at some point, everybody's going to have that one little moment where they move their leg a centimeter. Yes. And it's going to open up a window. And whether it was that one teacher that came over, just try, just see if you can do it once. You see what I'm saying? Right. At that perfect moment, at that perfect time, it will click and something will open up inside of them. And it's like a domino effect. I feel like that's happening right now. It's like this wave of awakening. And every single time one of us decides and chooses love over fear in the moment and continues on that path, we're paving and lighting a way for so many other people to tap into that collective consciousness that's shifting. I agree wholeheartedly. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. I just love this whole process. I loved having you on the show. I loved your stories. Some of these stories I haven't even heard. A couple of them I was familiar with. And this first, this, I love the, the one in the yoga room. That was a great story. That's so good. Yoga is such an integral part of my life. You know, I'll, I'll never like, not remember all of those little things, you know, like teaching my first class and teacher training and you know, all those things that just mm -hmm. completely shape you. Yeah, I had a huge shift. Um, I was going through my spiritual week and I just got back from two from teacher training in Tulum and then immediately jumped into a three year um, advanced yoga therapy training. Yeah, it happened to be right. in 2013, right when I had um, my spiritual awakening, and then I was in this, um, it was. Uh, healing emphasis yoga, which was all based on like the cultivation of consciousness and more so talking about the ego and everything more than it was on the physical parts, aspects of yoga. So it was like, I had like a three year, like support group around me that were, you know, reflecting back to me, my wholeness. I didn't realize how important that was to be in a space that was sacred, surrounded by other people um, having a teacher that was very much a messenger just for me at that moment, um, saying exactly what needed, what I needed to hear to click and help right. me move along my path and go through this like ego death process. And, and then it's, it was like, it's like peeling away an onion after that. Like, yeah, it's several awakenings later, right? It just keeps happening. You keep going through it, but yoga was a huge breakthrough for m moment for me too. Cool. So yeah. So why don't you tell our audience um, where everybody can find you online, your social media handles, your website, if you have any kind of free offering or anything you want to offer, however you want them to be able to reach out to you. Sure. So my freebie is, if, you know, if there's anybody that's listening and is intrigued by, you know, wanting to work with me via coaching one-on-one, -on -one, um, I always offer a 15-minute free discovery call. It's just like a light chat to see if we're a good fit, see where they're at. Um, you can find me on Insta. Uh, I'm Donna Jean, the Yogi Coach, and um, Facebook Donna Jean Hickey, um, and also Donna Jean, the Yogi Coach is you know my my business page, and uh, my website DonnaJean.com. Perfect. Oh my God, I'm so happy that you were able to to come on to the show. I know that the listeners are going to love this episode. I know I did. It was like really really interesting to hear your stories and your transformation. Thank you so much. And I just have to say really quick. Like forever ago, when I met you forever ago, I remember thinking to myself, oh, I would love to be on her podcast. <laughs> That's awesome. A year ago, a year ago when you first started up and now he, and then you invited me. I was like, yes. <laughs> yes. Perfect. I love it. Okay. Perfect. Well, all right, you guys, you guys can, you heard where you could check out Donna. If you want to check her out as a coach, I highly recommend her services and um, connecting with her on social media. And I'm going to put all of those links in the show notes for you as well. So can I, actually, can I, can I just say one more quick thing to your audience about sure. you? If you guys are, are sitting on the fence about Evolve, I was an Evolve member and I got so much value out of this program. It was really, really amazing. And there might be a time when I jump back in again, um, but just just do it. It's an amazing value. It's an amazing program. It's so much fun to be a part of. And Sarah's teachings are incredible. Oh my God. Thank you so much for that. No, I mean it. I mean it from my heart. I mean, it, it came into my life at such a, a great time. Oh, thank you. That means- You're welcome. So 
Thank you. Okay, you guys. Well, hopefully you'll tune in for the next episode. If you liked this episode, then I would really, really, really appreciate it if you consider giving a review on Apple Podcasts. And I will talk to you soon. Namaste. If you got value from this episode, please subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And I'd love it if you leave me a review on iTunes. For more info beyond this podcast, or if you have a question you'd like answered in an upcoming episode, please visit thecallinguncensored.com. And for daily inspiration or to shoot me a DM, come hang with me on Instagram at spiritualceo. Namaste.